right. Welcome to the 133rd episode of the Sawdust Nation podcast. I'm your host, Nick, from NPG Creations. I've got these two knuckleheads with me, Josh from North Country Woodworking and Nap from Nap's Naughty Works, LLC. We're going to do a little bit of a different thing tonight, right, guys? We thought it – well, actually, Nap came up with the idea where we were going to go ahead and give each other $500, like not – not physically give each other $500, but we were allowing ourselves to have $500 in a budget, and we are going to put together a shop to get you started. So if you're just getting started and you don't know where to look or what to buy, this is the type of episode that you don't want to miss. Um, so with that said, there are some parameters. Who wants to go ahead and Give the parameters for the, the rules of this engagement. So I'll get the rules or the parameters or whatnot. And because I'm curious, uh, a little primer here. I'm the only one that didn't put a table saw in mine. So we might have one of them go first because I'm curious to see what else they got in their shop. But the parameters are this. So we're all three of us in different locations, okay, which kind of makes this a beautiful thing because, one, I'm way far north where it seems things are a little more scarce even in the marketplace realm. Uh, Nick is down in San Antonio where it seems like he could find the best deals on Marketplace. And then Josh is in New Jersey. I feel like he probably has like a happy medium when it comes to like some nicer tools, maybe not some so nice tools. Um, but the thing of the matter was, like Nick said, we got $500. Now, I would like to think that I came up with this idea myself. Uh, but in talking to another newer maker, uh, and I would say newer just because he recently got back into it. Uh, Jason, one of our um, patrons, actually reached out to me and said, I want you to build a $500 shop and tell me what you would have in it. And honestly, I was kind of baffled by that question because to be fair, I didn't think you could build a shop under $500. Now, mind you, like Nick said, this is for the newest of makers. Somebody that just said one day, Hey, you know what? I feel like making something or they saw something at a craft fair, like let's say a flag or some of those things. They said, I can make that. And I was like, okay, maybe we can do this. Instead of talking about like what's going on in our shops, we're going to tell you, kind of like where our minds were when we first started by building our own shops based on kind of what we know now. Um, it's kind of, I would say it would have been hard to not use Marketplace and some of the other tools that we've learned when building the shop. So it's kind of cool to use what experience we have uh, to build a shop for you. So $500, worst case scenario, one stall garage. That's So that's why I said average size. Okay, so pretty much what Josh is working in. Okay, Josh, I can say, bro, you're in worst case scenario as far as like the yeah. new maker. And on top of that, Josh is also in base housing, which also gives you the um, information of he doesn't have very many power outlets, which means he had to do some craziness. He's borrowing neighbor's power for Christ's sake. Hey, so sh- I'm very. <laughs> uh, okay. Sh- yeah, sorry. No, he's not borrowing power from a, a neighbor. But. We decided we would go ahead and do that for you all, especially for the newer makers that listen to the podcast. Because, you know, we dive into a lot of CNC stuff, a lot of laser stuff. And guess what? Those things will come again later down the road because guess what? There'll be newbie episodes for certain things like this uh, as we go down the pipe. Because guess what? We are for the makers and we are here to help the community. So because guess what? Because guess what? <laughs> yeah. See, Nick likes to make fun of me when I have my catchphrases, but he's got his too. So I'll make sure I make fun of him every time he says something dumb. Um <laughs> I'll be here all day. <laughs> because yeah, no, guess right? what? It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and get down to it. So $500, one install garage. And because I'm giving the parameters to these knuckleheads over here, as Nick so called, this was you know the old trio of knuckleheads here. Uh, Josh, since you have the one install garage and you said you put a table saw in yours, I kind of want to hear what your shop is that you built first. So why don't you go and give it to us, and we'll talk about why we chose the things as we go, after we're done building. I would I would go ahead and take it away, but before I do, I want us to all name our shops. Before the end of the episode, toward the end, I want us to <laughs> give okay. a new name for the shops. I think it'd just be fun, creative. Um, Nick, I already know that smirk on your face. <laughs> I'm probably going to do some editing. <laughs> Uh, but let's see. Okay. So I'm going to preface this through my experience. Some of the tools uh, I got from some of these locations are good. Um, they're not the best, but they do the job, 
right? Because when you're starting a shop off with $500, you're not going to go and buy Fez tool and all these high brand prices unless a miracle happens and they're gifted to you. So I went through Facebook Marketplace, Harper Freight, Amazon, and those were our, well, I got all my tools, right? So we're going to start off with Facebook Marketplace because that's the first place I helped on and started looking. Now, through my time in the shop, I've realized the table saw is one of those things where I would assume you can't do without. Um, I think we're going to be proven wrong later. But uh, I went ahead and found a rigid 10-inch 15-amp portable pro job site saw. Now, to be fair, this comes with the stand and everything else. And there were other saws that were just about $50 less-ish. But they were they have a smaller base. I chose the rigid because the blade is further away from the beginning, giving you more ample room before you make the cut and some other variables, right? And that was going for 250. So that was half my budget basically right there. Ooh. So I had I had to get pretty thrifty throughout the rest. Personally, leave you should have a router in your shop um, because you can do so much with it. Um, that adds a lot of uh, versatility. And that was my second uh, thing I looked up. So I found a rigid uh, palm router and it included some bits too. Um, they're probably dull, but you know what? It's going to get you started. It looked like they had a chamfer bit and a roundover bit. And um, I forget what the other couple were, but that was going for about 50 bucks. And it was corded and, you know, you're not going to get anything that cheap for, you know, battery operated. And then you're talking about more money. Um, so going through, I'm like, hmm, what other big ticket item would I want in my shop? Now, not knowing what I was going to produce, right? So I am 100% uh, going to look for a bandsaw. Now this, I had to really look. Uh, it took me a while to find a good deal, but I did find an off-brand called Track Life Bandsaw. It's 10 inches, great shape for 40 bucks and comes with extra blades. Um, so right there, I have the three big tools I know I really want in my shop. I feel with those, you can really do a wide variety of, um, oh, wide variety. Where'd of you find the bandsaw? On, uh, that was Facebook marketplace as well. Um, so, so far it's all been Facebook marketplace and, um, then we're going to be getting into, uh, the Craig R3 pocket hold jig. Now. When you're starting woodworking, you're doing butt joints, you're doing different types of joinery. You might know about some of the finer joints, um, but a pocket hole jig is just, you can't beat it. I mean, like, especially if you're going to start doing these smaller projects and getting projects out, it's going to allow you to actually produce some, you know, really strong joints, right? So the, I found that on Facebook Marketplace for $20. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> you don't want to do that while you're cutting. Uh, but strong anyway, <laughs> very strong. Um, so that, that kind of summarizes my, um, my Facebook marketplace, everything else, uh, I either bought new, well, yeah, everything else is new. Um, I try to stay away from the bigger tools that would cost more, um, buying new because obviously I wanted to find those good deals and bear in mind, you might be able to wheel and deal on these a little bit as well. And this was in a 50 mile radius. So I was willing to drive a little bit as well. Just want to put that out there. Okay. So let's go and dive into, we'll go Amazon. So I know layout tools are a big thing in my shop. Like, you know, we've talked about, you know, what's important in the shop multiple times. And I've mentioned layout tools because I feel like without them, products are going to be a little bit crooked. I mean, yeah, they help produce a nice product, right? So um, I went on Amazon and I went ahead and bought myself some Machina Squares. It's a set. They have two, four, six, and eight inches for $25. Um, they're probably not going to be perfectly square for that price, but they're going to be pretty damn close. That's expected, right? Um, so then I can tell if my corners are 90 degrees. I can make sure things are you know lining up the way they should. Um, and that's important as well. And then I bought myself a four- and a six inch double square combo set on Amazon for, I believe that was $38. And mind you, these are rounded up to the nearest dollar to make it easy. Okay. Um, those two, um, I use all the time in my shop. I bought them in the way, you know, when I first started and they've been nonstop used. It 
they're my go-to uh, combo squares. And I use them from just rulers to the square portion. And it just allows me to line stuff up. They're great tools. Um, while I was on Amazon, I'm like, hmm, I need a tape measure. Now, I know we talked about this before. Nick really likes, you know, the big, large rulers. Uh, but a good tape measure in the beginning is going to help you. They go up to like, I, don't know, I think this one, I didn't write it down. I should have. It's a Craftsman tape measure. It was, I think, 30 feet. Um, and that was $6. So right there and then. Uh, the next thing I went to look up was the Stanley chisel set that I got when I first started and had beat the hell out of ever since. Um, they're not fine chisels by any means, but they can definitely get some chisel work done. And if you sharpen them, you can get, you know, a rough job done. That way you can work on the joinery and a little finer stuff, you know, clean some stuff up. That, like I said, was $8 from Amazon. And then the last thing, or sorry, um, I am going to back up one because I did forget. I did buy something else from Facebook Marketplace, and it was a Dewalt uh, ROS sander for fifty dollars. Okay, um, my apologies, I messed that on my list here. Uh, and then the last thing I got from a Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, I bought four each, uh, thirty-six inch bar clamps. They go for about. Uh, twelve dollars or something so i rounded up the 13 and i added a little tax on there and i, I think i around it to 55 dollars so with everything i bought i came out with a 492 dollar tab and the rest could be used for glue or whatever um if they find a good deal while they're buying the rest or when i'm buying the rest you can go and do that pencils what have you but that would give me a table saw a router a bandsaw a decent sander some clamps, uh, machinist squares, a double combination square, four and six inch, a tape measure, some chisels, and a pocket hole jig. So that's what uh, I did with my shop. Um, really fun to go back and through and see um, what some of these prices were. Because, you know, as you go through, you buy this stuff and some of it you don't think about. But um, I believe with the shop set up, you can honestly do a great bit of different projects and dive into the hobby or, you know, soon maybe the business and, uh, get out there. Nice. Uh, you guys have any questions about like, uh, why I picked certain things? Why'd you pick chisels? Well, because from the very beginning I've had chisels in the shop. They've helped me clean up different, uh, cuts. Uh, they've helped me gouge out different things I needed to it, all around. They've helped me in the shop and I've, you know, as a woodworker, if you're going to start, you know, trying to produce fine um, projects and you want to learn different joinery, you're going to need a chisel. Okay. All right. Nap, you got any questions? No. It's actually pretty solid. Honestly, this is what I would do if I was going to start over again. This is what I would want in my shop. With that, Nick, want to go next? So I'm coming from a point uh, where I actually came from. So this is... This is when I didn't know what I didn't know. And uh, a lot of the tools that I bought back then to get me through got me through till I could upgrade. So let's just get one thing straight. Whether it be Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, it's your friend. All right. So yep. out of the $500 that I got, I spent 450 on beer. And no, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, so first thing I started was, all right, so I always had issues with chopping down lumber and getting a square cut. So I found a Delta chop saw. It's a 10-inch chop saw on Facebook Marketplace. Um, you don't necessarily need the sliding miter. You can just flip the board over um, if it's surfaced already. But uh, I found it for $65. So, boom, I, that was immediately just first pick. Um, and I, I agree that the, every shop should have a table saw, especially if you're ripping down items for uh, to make flags or whatever. If you're doing small, thin pieces and, and stuff like that, as long as you're safe and you have your push stick and all that. But I found a Ryobi table saw with a stand. It was very nice, actually. And uh, it had a roll, wheels on the stand and everything, so you can like fold it up and, and push it against the wall when you're not using it. But uh, it's $120 on 
on Facebook oh, wow. Marketplace. Nice uh, That's normally, a freaking San Antonio special right there. <laughs> right? If I never heard one, that's right. One hundred twenty dollars. Honest to God, because I did this. I did this in a combination of yesterday and today. So I went, I gave myself a few days to look and see what I could find. If anything new popped up, I would add it on there. Um, there were a couple other Ryobi table saws that were about like almost the same thing and they were r- roughly around the same price point. So I felt pretty confident that I could stag one for about that price. Uh, so that puts me at $185. Um, next up, you absolutely need a router. I, and my Bosch Colt is a beast. It's, it's helped me with so many darn projects and I use it every day. So I found one for $65. It's corded. So you never have to worry about the battery going dead. And uh, that puts me at $240 off the Facebook Marketplace. Now, that router didn't come with any bits. So I was like, wait, I'm not going to get very far if I don't have any bits for the router. So I searched router bits in Facebook Marketplace and found a set of Ryobi uh, 24 set of uh, quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch bits. And man, I'll tell you what, they had roundovers, they had chamfers, they had, uh, what do you call it, the dovetail, the, the, mm-hmm. the mortisers, they had, a, they had yeah. them all in there. Yeah. I can't guarantee that those bits are going to last, like Josh said, his, the bits he got with his router were kind of garbage, but the bits that you're going to get here, I can't guarantee they're going to last either, but they'll get you through at least one project, or at least a project, till you you know, can recoup some money and buy the actual bits you want. So that was $65. It was just as much as the router cost. So it puts me at $305. Now, uh, I actually added wood glue in because I I know that that's one of those things, if you're brand new, you don't really think about much. You don't just assume that you're going to need wood glue because a lot of people think fasteners are going to do the job every time. So... I found on Amazon for $14 a 36-ounce bottle of Gorilla Wood Glue, uh, which puts me at $320. Um, now, there is a common theme here. I did pick a lot of Ryobi stuff, and nothing against Ryobi. Uh, it is a you know it is a very entry-level uh, tool, or they do make very entry-level tools, but their stuff works, man. And yeah. if you can have that tool until you can upgrade i mean you're golden and then you put it back on marketplace and sell it for the same price you got it for right (laughs) but uh i bought a ryobi drill with a battery and a charger 18 volt for 300 or excuse me for four forty dollars 40 bucks can't beat it man then that puts me at 360. uh i wanted a jigsaw because remember when we're first starting out we're like oh man i want to make some cornhole boards Right, I didn't. When I first started, I didn't know about the hole saw, so I bought a router, or uh, excuse me, a, a Black and Decker jigsaw corded, and that only cost me fourteen dollars, and it had a blade, so win. Um, so now I'm at three hundred and seventy-five dollars, uh, and all right. So also, when I first started working in the in the garage in the shop, I um. I used to do it on whatever, like I had like tough boxes. I had uh, gorilla cases from like deployments and stuff. I would stack them and then I'd work on that. And then I got smart and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build myself a workbench because I think that's one of the, probably one of the most key tools in the shop is to have a space to assemble things on. And so what I did was I went to the home depot.com and obviously for this area, one sheet of the 23, 30 second, inch plywood it's the real crappy stuff but it's a four by eight sheet cost me 36 dollars and that's it's like really really crappy it's not it's just a step above osb but you don't need it to be like cabinet grade if you're just going to have a work you need a work service you know so now i'm at 411 dollars. that's for just a sheet of plywood and then i bought eight two by fours at 350 a piece Puts me at $439. Total price on the two by fours is $28, not including my military discount. <laughs> and then, uh, what are you going to put them together with? Well, Deckmate screws, $11 for, for the small box. 
that should be good enough to make you one workbench. And if you run out of screws, guess what? You uh, probably didn't plan it out so well. <laughs> you probably need to re reposition a couple of them. And believe me, I've done that before. You're like, well, I put so many screws in this joint, I might as well just pull one out and put it somewhere else. So uh, after the Deckmate screws for $11 at Home Depot, I'm at $450 doll hairs. All right, so something you kind of don't realize when you're first starting out either is like, man, how how am I gonna hold all this stuff together if I'm gluing it or like, you know, I need to I need to put these two pieces of wood together, but they keep moving when I'm screwing the the deck screws in. Well, I thought of that too now. Fifteen dollars for some pump clamps. The I got twenty four inch pump clamps, three of them. 12 inch pump clamps, two of them, and they're Irwin, a combination of Irwin, Pony, and Bessie. And it was all for 15 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. So now I'm at nice. $465. Yeah. I got lucky. I thought, I, I mean, I didn't message the guy, but <laughs> I got lucky when I found that. Uh, all right. So layout tools. That's another thing that you kind of, you come back from the store and you're like, oh, crap. I got to measure this stuff. How am I going to measure it? Well, Carpenter Square, Speed Square, boom. That works great. Works fantastic. So $5, Facebook Marketplace. And then the Stanley 25-foot measuring tape for 5 bucks, And it came with light bulbs, too. So I don't know. It just said measuring tape and light bulbs in, in the ad. So I bought it all, $5. You need light in the shop, gonna, right? <laughs> I'm not going to nickel and dime the guy and be like, hey, man, I don't need the light bulbs. How much for just the measuring tape? That's kind of petty at $5, right? So so now my total costs are $475. I, I've, aside from one item on Amazon, which was the glue and the, uh, the workbench material, which was from Home Depot, everything else is on Marketplace. Uh, lastly, I was like, okay, so... I'm done with the cornhole boards. They're assembled. I need to start finishing them. So what am I going to do to get them smooth and get all the, the corners and stuff knocked down and all that? So I found a Ryobi orbital sander with some paper too on Facebook Marketplace for 25 bucks for the kit. And uh, it's corded, but still, I mean, can't beat it with it. I'd buy that for a dollar. Anyway, you know, Robocop? Yes. So... That's my shop, $500. I got a slew of items, nothing of which is going to break the bank individually and nothing of which is going to over, like overstock my garage, my one stall garage to make it to where it's hard to move around. Um, I also accounted for like, look, if you do the workbench and you build, you know, put a shelf on the bottom, you can store most of those tools on the bottom of your workbench as well. The only thing I wish I would have considered was getting casters for the workbench. But other than that, that would have added another like 25 bucks. Yeah, it's anyway. on the casters. Any questions, guys? No, I'm not going to lie. Your, um, your access to amazing marketplace things is it, it, it's just cherry, you know, fucking peachy. Or, so, sorry, it's just peachy. So that's, so <laughs> like, like my, it actually my, makes me <laughs> mad. <laughs> My search radius was 25 miles too. So, I dude, have a wall. okay, for okay, I hate you, <laughs> but at the same time, I gotta say, for all you new makers out there, if you're in San Antonio, you know for damn sure you can build a a workshop under 500 dollars. Just ask Nick. <laughs> and now it's not gonna make it's not so none of this stuff is gonna get you to, uh, I don't know, like you're you're not gonna build. I guess you could say like magazine worthy armoires and stuff like that with this, but this will get you started. And mm -hmm. in the hopes that if you like it, you just keep upgrading or if you're into it, you know, you just keep building and building and building. And suddenly you're at my spot now where you don't have any more room in your shop. It's just kind of <laughs> like, but anyway, now what do you got? Before we head out of the nap, the, the workbench is a brilliant idea. I think it's for storage. I think it's for, you know, working on something I really didn't consider because when I started off, I didn't have a workbench. I had the ground. So as you were talking, though, 
what would your thoughts be instead of going and buying i forget the total price of the screws the wood and everything was i wrote uh, i was trying to keep up but i didn't get that one price um about some saw horses and a piece of scrap plywood that you can find at uh you know either construction <laughs> construction I mean, you site can do that or something like by that. all means by all means you can do that but i'm gonna give you this it's safer to have a workbench when you're when you're when you're working with like power tools, especially the miter saw or the chop saw. Um, and you're, you're, while you're, so like that's the centerpiece in your shop behind the table saw, right? Um, you're moving around it. If you knock one of them saw horses over and everything on top of it's coming down. And then oh, you yeah, I wouldn't put the chop that's, saw. That's my there. only concern. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's why I did that because I had been in your position where I was using the ground. I'm like, this sucks. My back hurts. And, I wish I had a table to use, you know, like a workbench. So yeah, earn that table so, that comes with projects. <laughs> well, that also gives you planning, planning ex, um, experience as well. So, uh, you know, you, I've always drawn my own plans for when I'm doing workbenches, just because I want it custom to what I need. So you might not need the full four by eight sheet of plywood for your, for your, you know, you might need half that. Well, guess what? You cut that plywood in half, and now you got a shelf on the bottom. And you can store other tools and stuff down there. So now you just reduce your footprint, mm. even though even though you are creating a large footprint because of the table, you're you're reducing your footprint because you have place to store all the tools. So do that. Anyway. Some good points there. Sorry not to take that from you. I was just curious uh, on what his thoughts were. All right, and that's all the time we have for you, folks. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, so I gotta say, guys, like, so I'm fairly, I'm pretty impressed with you guys in shops because you both were able to include the table saw in there. Uh, unfortunately, here in Minot, North Dakota, looking all over the interwebs as far as, well, as far as I'm willing to travel, let's say, um, I didn't find anything except for some really junky cast iron ones that I weren't, sh- I wasn't even sure we even worked, to be honest with you. Uh, typically, when you look at things like that, you're like, okay, what's the condition of it? And if it doesn't look like it's in good condition, you probably aren't even going to try to touch it, to be honest with you. So why even waste the money and possible time trying to restore a table saw? So I went a little bit of a different route. And I will start with um, my work surface, work surfaces. Um, based on what I currently have here in my knot, if I was starting all over again, I have my truck, I have my one stall garage with very limited outlets. Okay. So my first work surface, it's free because I already own it, and it's the tailgate of my truck. Okay? So that I've works. got that, which I have used before multiple times mm-hmm. with the uh, types of tools that I'm about to uh, talk about here. Okay? So we got the Bora Track Clamp, okay? And that is right out, right up the, the old website for $16, Okay? And then I've got the Ryobi Circular a Facebook Marketplace. I, I've scribbled $40 here, okay? $40 off Marketplace. Now, like Nick said, a lot of my stuff can be Ryobi, and there's nothing against Ryobi. It's just one of those tools that you get started with. It's just what it is. I, I got started with DeWalt, and that's when things were actually cheap, okay? And DeWalt cheap then is actually, yeah, actually cheap then is very cheap con- compared to now. Mm-hmm. okay so i didn't total out mine as i went i just did a grand total so just hopefully you guys can follow along here um and then so i got the track clamp i got the circular saw and then of course i found free plywood now i didn't find this on marketplace okay i found this uh we'll say through means of being at work so i actually inherited like a bunch of sheets of plywood four by eight pieces of plywood okay so that would be part of my work service so again free 99 is the best uh best price you can get right so I got that, but then I go to Harbor Freight and I pick up two sawhorses for thirteen ninety nine a piece. Okay, so I got my two sawhorses using the idea Josh was talking about. Okay, but then with those sawhorses, taking into what Nick said into account, because I didn't think about this, but it's a good idea. I'm not looking at the fa- the old fucking or the old YouTube, so I can't see it. Uh, I'll, I'll read it to you if you uh, get a second. God, Jason's like, I want to see you use your tailgate when it's negative twenty outside. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, they, hey, listen, listen. They have gloves, jackets, and boots for a reason. All right? So there was that. Now, let's see here. Hang on. So, yeah, the miter saw. So my compound miter saw, that was actually the most expensive thing. So the reason why I chose the more expensive miter saw, brand new, mind you, at $199 from Home Depot, 12-inch single bevel saw. To be fair, I've never used a double bevel on my saw. I've never used the left to right. So if I could go back, I, 
I I would change the fact that um, I bought a double beveled miter saw. I just don't use it. I use the forty five on um, the you know the little button right here, and you go left and right with the table saw. I've used that, but I've never done the you know the what is it the vertical or horizontal movements. Never done it. Really? Okay. I, I haven't because I've always had a table saw. So and really, I've never made anything big enough to where I had to um, what you call it. Where I've had to do that big of a forty-five, because when I got to Texas, I already had a table saw, so like there was no like rebuild for me when it came to that kind of stuff. But anyways, so one ninety-nine, brand new Dewalt compound miter saw. Mine's been going for about four. Hang on, two thousand fourteen six. It's almost almost ten years now that my miter saw has been been working. So I know that it's going to last, and you know, for a starting maker, that's probably a good thing to have is a very solid and reliable miter saw. Okay, getting into a couple other things. So we got the bar track clamp. I said that we got the cordless or the corded circular saw. We have the saw horses. We have the plywood. Uh, we got the jigsaw, obviously. So I got the corded jigsaw for thirty five dollars off of the old marketplace. And would you believe it? it's brand new, and it's actually from somebody. It's not one of the ads. It's just a we bought it, realized we didn't want it, and we're just going to sell it and take you know take the hit on it. What brand? Uh, Ryobi. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Ryo, we can't sleep on Ryobi, especially for the new maker, um, because Ryobi does make a solid starter They've uh, set of tools, game. if you will. Since they have. When we started, they're, like, their tools have definitely become um, better quality since I started woodworking. Do you mm. remember when they were blue? Yes. No. Yeah, Ryobi used to be blue and, and yellow, and now it's like what? Real green and like lime green and yellow. Yeah, lime green and yellow because it's gross that way. I don't like that color. I'm just saying. You can at least say nobody's going to steal your stuff. This is true. This is very true. No, they still will. Let's see what else I got on here. All right, so we got the. Okay, Nick said this, and I I tend to agree. Speed square really good for squaring things up real quick. Can't really go without it. I mean, you could go the old fashioned way. And that was what I had my tape measures for. There is a way to square things up by using tape mm-hmm. measure corner to corner. But again, that's why it's a speed square because it's just a lot easier to square something up with uh, a simple piece of metal that's shaped like a triangle that we call a square. Kind of weird. But anyways, all right, so there's that. I got the two-pack tape measure, 1997 from Home Depot. I will tell you why the two-pack because you're always going to lose one in the shop and you're going to have to have one on standby. It's, right. just, it's just what it is. Two-pack for life. All eyes on me. <laughs> At this point, it's like six pack. I got six of them damn things, and I've lost all but one. They're somewhere in that shop. I don't know where they went. Tape measures actually. Uh, the smaller the shop, the less tools you have. The you only need one or two tape measures. But the more tools you get, the more tape measures you get because it's easier to get lost in the mix. Yeah, that and you set them down in random places, and you're just like, I hate you. There's like, a golden ratio that we should figure out for that. <laughs> we really should. Um, Let's see. So we got the two pack. Okay. So we went into clamps. Okay. I only went with two 48 inch clamps um, because typically as a new maker, I I hate to say this, but when I was new, I didn't make a lot of really, really large items. So I really didn't have a need for a lot of large, uh, a large number of clamps. Right now I've got like 50 clamps in my garage Uh, and there's never enough because I always need more. I don't understand what, why, but it just happens to be that way. Um, Let's see what else. And then, uh, where's that router at? I know I have a router on here somewhere. Oh, drills. So you need drill stuff, you know? So I found a drill kit from DeWalt, $75 used on the marketplace with drill bits and like, you know, Phillips head, flat head, all the, the basic bits and then basic, you know, drill bit kit. So that was 75 bucks. Need one of them. I thought I had a router on here. I guess I, well, guess oh, what? Wait I guess till next drill... paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so wait. We'll wait till next paycheck. Not a big deal. I didn't actually, believe it or not, I actually didn't use a router like that when I first started. I didn't because I figured, oh, oh if I'm making flags, I really, I didn't ever did the, you know, what is it? Uh, chamfer or any of that stuff on my flags. I always had them just glued straight up, nice and flat, like never. Believe it or not, my good. first use of the router was for rabbits and dados. That's what I used them for. Interesting. I mean, yeah, you can definitely do that. Hmm. Well, so I definitely got the router bits, though. I got those on here. I guess I forgot the router. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about the router, but then I thought about the router bits. 
Uh, Nick, I'm going to have to borrow your router, dude. Sorry. Come um, on over. <laughs> we'll mail it to you. Over <laughs> but there. I did find the Harbor Freight router bits for, what was it, 35 bucks or thirty nine ninety seven for a 15-pack of router bits. Oh, man, um, you, saved, you saved some money. I should have gone with those. I would have had more money to buy crap. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I mean, Harbor Freight, I mean, listen, we can't sleep on them because they are good for the starter tools. Honestly, if you're a new maker and you're not looking for a lot of big stuff right away and you're just looking to do the basic hand tools, Honestly, they have a lot of good stuff there, but um, for the budget here, we had to go all over the place for it. Rule of thumb for Harbor Freight, if it can kill you, don't buy there. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> um, let's see here. I, I swear to God, I had a freaking router on here. Lies. Yeah, I, I don't have it. That that bothers me. Well, your maybe, yeah. Where's your end, end budget at here? Four ninety three eighty seven. That was maybe, my end budget. Let me get a router for seven bucks. <laughs> hey, maybe bucks. or okay. So if I were to go back, I probably would drop the compound miter if I was going to drop any price because a lot of the stuff I got pretty dirt cheap, and maybe find a used miter saw because that one was brand new, uh, and then maybe get the router. Dude, but I, a lot of the thing, good. You know, oh. speaking of that, don't sleep on pawn stores, pawn shops either, man. Yeah, you can walk in there. That's true. And everything is negotiable. <laughs> So you just walk in there, and if you don't like the price, throw them an offer. What's the worst they can but say? That's also, no. that's also a bigger city thing, too. I mean, like, um, around here, I would have to drive quite a ways to find a pawn shop. Um, and then, I don't know about Nap, but, like, where I grew up, not a thing. Not unless you could drive an hour. So, like, it depends on location, I would say, for that. So I got to say, for pawn stores, I hate pawn stores. I've I, Honestly, so, Nick... And this is and this is more for Nick, just because I feel you have the temperament to deal with pawn pawn store folks. I do not, because the minute they try to tell me a price and try to haggle with them, they and their assholes, I just walk out. Like, okay, cool. Like, I'm not gonna do this. The good um, part about but, pawn stores is, if your stuff gets stolen, you can always go buy it back from the pawn store. That's awful, but also true. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting there. But the one thing, I, the bad taste I got about pawn stores was that. I would go to sell something, right? You sell it, and they're like, oh, we'll buy it for this. But you know for a fact they're going to double that price and sell it. So oh, it's just absolutely. like – like you know, like you find a, a tool there. Like there was like uh, tabletop joiners there for like 250 almost brand-new prices. Like that thing's not even new. It's been used so much. It's got rust on it. Come on. It's now. new, it's, like, oh, no, it, it's, it's new. It came with the rust, okay? It's it, the yeah, rust absolutely. edition. Absolutely, from the packaging. Yep. <laughs> I, okay. I'll tell you Special what, guys, edition so rust. I'm going to throw out Money Man Pawn in Charleston, South Carolina, the one at exit 199 off I-26. They have a bin that make me an offer bin. And I went in there once and the guy was like, I was like, how much for this? And he's like, that's the make me an offer bin. How much, you know, make me an offer. I was like, a dollar? He's like, sold. I was like, it was for a, for some hand tools. I was like, yes. Anyway, check them out. Money Man Pawn. We are not sponsored by them, but. No, we might be not. later. You never know. <laughs> but so I got to say, like a lot of these tools I picked because when I first started out, uh, and this was like when in North Carolina. So I brought all my stuff from you know North Carolina to Lackland, and before then I didn't have a nice table saw or any of that. When I started out in North mm-hmm. Carolina, when I started making random things, like it was just random things, and I actually started when I was building my son's uh, nursery, uh, and I ended up having to get very creative. Uh, with how I used my tools. Uh, so for example, why, uh, some people would very much frown upon this, but I learned this when I was probably 12 years old when my dad and I were rebuilding our basement. A circular saw flipped upside down made with a homemade jig makes a really good table saw. I had a uh, follower ask me about that that was in a different country. He asked me how mm-hmm. I would go about doing it uh, early on. And uh, I was very hesitant to point him in any direction, but uh, I found a YouTube link, of course, and I sent it to him. I'm like, I wouldn't personally do this. Good luck. I never heard from him again. So I, I hope you didn't me. kill him. He can't. I didn't um, tell him to do he it. He doesn't have any thumbs to text you anymore. So <laughs> true that. Wow. Um, I, wow. I do want to bring up a, a point about um, the list that we have now. If you own a home or even if you're renting, you might already have some tools in your arsenal that you've acquired through gifts or just, you know, like doing stuff around the house. You might be doing work on your car. Um, 
And for me personally, I didn't think about the drill. I, I put a Craig jig on here and I didn't put a drill in my yeah. list at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, <laughs> yo, if you're doing this, you're counterproductive because not only are you drill it, but you're you're like going in it's and out. Fire, I don't man. Know if it's gonna work. So I can put a coal there and burn it away. No. Um <laughs> So for me, I actually had a set of drills before I started woodworking. Like I've had those, I had those in the shop. That was just something I had. And so when I started woodworking, it was already there. And it was amazing to me that I forgot to put that on the list because of that. Nick said it perfectly. He, I, and I almost guarantee, I'm going to make a general sense here, that we all put things on our list that we bought that we needed when we started. Um. So is there anything on your list, okay, that you already had that you either forgot to put on there or you put on there because you remembered? Nick? So the drill thing, right? The -hmm. only reason I bought a drill to begin with was well before I started woodworking. If you're a brand new homeowner and you've never owned a home before and you just moved out of a dorm, guess what? You don't own anything. This is true. And I was like, Oh yeah, cool. We have, I have all these picture frames and pictures and stuff I want to hang up. Oh wait, I can't, I I need a drill. (laughs) I need to, I need to be able to drill a hole. So I went out and got a drill for that reason. That's that's, true. So, but I added, uh, the only thing I added to this list because I didn't have it when I first started was the chop saw. That would have made life so much easier initially. Because I was using, I was using, uh, I was using a circular saw, and you can do it, but it's not going to be straight every time. So you can use a combo anyway. or, uh, yeah, the speed square that help with that too. Yeah, that's true. It, it depends true if you're doing that. like a two by four or a two by six. If you start going anything a little bit longer than that, it gets kind of hairy. Yeah. Anyway, what about you, Nap? I can say, listen to y'all shop. I picked a lot of stuff that I felt was just the basic things. You guys thought a little, I feel it maybe a little more, but also again, you guys have more available. So some of the things like that y'all mentioned, I looked up and I just couldn't find things. So I kind of had to mm-hmm. go a different route. But the one thing that's on here that I've actually never have, or I've never had until I was here at Sawhorses. Nick had them. I've seen him use them and they, they were, they're great for a lot of things. Like, when you're spraying stuff and you're, you know, you just get some really thin strips of plywood and you're putting stuff on, you're spraying halcyon, spraying spray paint, any of those things, really good for that. Also really good for if you're just making quick cuts with, let's say, a uh, reciprocating saw or a circular saw, any of those things. Uh, I've never had them. I just never had a use, real use until uh, I, well, watch Nick use them for finish. And then I'm in my shop and I'm like, well, I can't do the finish outside anymore. So, and I need my work surface. So I ended up setting that up on the side you know, well, that's less congested, putting two strips of um, plywood and then using it for, you know, finish work and whatnot. And it's in an area where the least amount of dust collects. So it's, it's even better, to be honest with you. Hmm. Um, but sawhorses was something I've never had. But everything on here was something that either A, I bought when I first started or um, wish I would have had right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first started though, I ain't going to lie to you. I bought things by the paycheck because I went and bought brand new. I think knowing now what I do, like knowing what I know now, I would have bought used to start. And then as I bumped up, I would have bought the, you know, nicer, even nicer stuff. Now, mind you, I learned that lesson a little later down the road, you know, going to San Antonio, but I also had, um, uh, a helper, if not the conscience behind me named Nick, uh, Sansoni and telling me do it, you know, in his freaking, you know, Sith Lord voice as I'm freaking trying not to buy something, you know, like a saw stop that has, yeah, that has a bunch of really cool stuff on it. That was the first thing that coaxed me into buying was that damn saw stop. And I was like, but I I don't need it right now. He goes, but I told him, I told him to do it here. I'll help you do it. (laughs) Give me your card. (laughs) I went with him. So you swiped it for him? Pretty much did. he He cried in the background. No. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, no, there goes my money. And, then, and I was like, oh, this thing's freaking awesome. Um, but then you know, I had to get 220 put in my garage and all that stuff. But I can definitely tell you a lot of this stuff is really good for the for the new maker. And five hundred dollars is a pretty tight budget, I feel. That's why we that's why Jason, I think, gave me that budget when he when he initially talked about that. Is five hundred dollars, it's hard to go 
uh, and get a lot of good, decent tools for that, I, th- I feel. Uh, but Nick, you mentioned like glue and all that stuff. So I got to say, I didn't put that. I would say it's not a rule. The fact that you thought of a surface is pretty, pretty mm-hmm. solid, you know, building one, having wood glue, screws and all that stuff. But to me, like those are all incidentals. Like when you're, when you're getting in a shop, like you're, you're not thinking of those things first, right? You're thinking of what tools do I need? And then the afterthought, after you've taken two trips to the store, then you're like, shit, I need screws. I need this. I need that. That's when the supplies come in, you know, into play. And then you're like, I got to go there and get all these supplies now. So I'd say $500. Yeah. And then, you know, you got the $500 in tools, but then whatever goes into your material. I mean, that, that it is what it is, I guess, with that. Now, when you guys first got started, so we built the shop, which shops sound awesome, and we'll come up with the names here in a few because, Josh, that was funny, and I didn't even think of that either. That was good. What were some of the first things y'all would have made with your current shop setup? I know, Nick, you said cornhole boards, right? But Made a lot of money doing that too. Yeah, I was going to say, with your current setup, now minus the cornhole boards, Nick, what else would you guys have made with what you put on your list now? Like that might have, would have made money now in the Etsy world, word of mouth. What do you think? Um, I do know that I made like wall signs and stuff too, but I hand painted them. You know what I mean? So I would cut them out with a jigsaw. I would draw the thing out and then I cut it out with a jigsaw. Then I would hand paint it. So, but other than that, not much. Mostly de- decoration. Okay. What are you got? Um, cutting boards, always a go-to, especially when you start off a little harder because you can't really flatten anything, but I mean, like you could try, right? Um, a lot of sand. Yeah. Decor stuff, obviously. Um, I did a, the two bookshelves, the two projects I started off with, with a router, a circular saw, and, you know, uh, I think I picked up, what did I use? The screws. I think I had to use screws and glue. Um, so, I mean, like I got that done with, you know, the bare basic bones, you know, without a table saw the whole nine yards. So, uh, it's possible, uh, especially to make furniture. Um, yeah. Well, you, man. So when I started making, like I said, it was for my son's nursery. So I did a lot of refurb, like I rebuilt, a um, rebuilt a rocking chair, in certain sorts of things with a jigsaw. I, I mean, I didn't have air nailer on here, but I had an air nailer. You know, I got the boss stitch special. You know, it came with the two, the three nail, two nailers and a staple gun. You know, all the things, the things that yeah. were included here. Um, but I've seen a lot of interesting things make their way into the Etsy world. There, I call it the leaning bottle holder. Um, I don't know if you've mm-hmm. seen Cornerstone mm-hmm. Woodworks. He makes those. They have like that. Uh, depending on the bottle, depending on the size of the plank, there'll be an angle, uh, you know, edge at the bottom mm-hmm. portion with a hole, and it like literally offsets and balances uh, and holds like a wine bottle. Um, you can make bottle openers with magnets in them. You know, those just take a drill, some glue, magnets, and you know, miter saw, make those sorts of things. Like and just quick ones too. Uh, and then you can probably go the route of what Nick was saying with the painting, flags. I didn't make flags out the gate. Uh, I will tell you. It's safe to use a table saw, not the upside down circular saw for something like that. I just, I would not personally do that. I would not advise, um, but I would definitely stick around with the home decor stuff because of the miter saw. Um, so like J- uh, Jason was making some cool stuff um, with some leftover floor planks, uh, oak floor planks. Now, mind you, he also has a table saw, but if you ever seen people do like the geometric shapes and they put them together and then they frame them. And like they'll paint like the certain shapes to make it look like mountain mm-hmm. scenery. Yeah, you could do stuff like that with just a miter saw. You know, if your if your strips of wood are you know thin enough, but even then you can take old plywood with that track that bore a track clamp that I had with the circular saw, cut strips of wood, and then cut your angles on the miter saw. So all that kinds of stuff. If I were to start over again, I probably would have started with that stuff because that stuff is those are things you can make with the simplest of tools. Mm-hmm. I think. Absolutely. And then, of um, course, Jameson did have a couple of suggestions in the chat. One of them being you could uh, put a ad up by Craigslist saying, hey, I'm a new maker. You can donate tools to me. Um, if anyone in the area is willing to do that, getting rid of tools, that's a good idea. And then he said, nobody said hammer. And my comment to that is that's why uh majority of us got Ryobi. 
because we can use that as a hammer. <laughs> or we could just make a mallet. Or, you know, I could just... That was what my it, actual uh, thoughts. Tape is measure, it? maybe? Have you any of you used a tape measure to yes. hit a nail? I have. Yep. <laughs> You're like, I just need to get this guy in just a little bit. And then, you know, you <laughs> smack it and it goes in, you know? Well, I mean, that's one of the... Uh, I mean, with the table saw and everything else, even with uh, some of the sauce you guys chose, you can go ahead and make a simple mallet, a scrap wood, you know what I'm saying? And it don't take much. And they last long, dude. Hey, you could also use rocks. Cavemen did it, okay? Just saying. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> uh, we're getting there in time. You guys have a name for your shops. Do you need a moment? Do we, should we play the Jeopardy? No, I have mine. Okay, Nick. Go ahead. It's called the butt joint. Featured what, BJM? The butt <laughs> joint, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's an LLC. <clears throat> I like it. I like it. Nice. Nap? Hmm. Well, I can't use naps now he works. You know, I just can't do it. Uh, Sticks and Stones Workshop. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. Especially with the after the uh, hammer comment with the rock. It would just it'd be perfect. Okay. Nicely done. Uh, I went with Stubby's Workshop. Is it because you lose fingers when working with the tools that you put? <laughs> yeah, <pretty laughs> when you flip up. <laughs> Especially when you flip a, a circular a saw over and use it as a table saw. Oh, you never flipped a table saw and use that as a circular saw? It's, it's I've not, seen that do done not, on Do not my, do that. I've, I've, seen, I've seen it. I've, it was for, it was for like large large pieces of timber they were using it. No, it was it was for plywood. Yeah, he, they were cutting a whole stack of plywood. He tips over the table saw and he uses it like a circular saw. And I'm sitting there, I'm like... It gave me anxiety just watching. I'm like, my God. <laughs> Jason goes, nap, beating nails with a rock on a tailgate in negative 20 degrees. Caveman that work, be... uh, workshop. There you go. Yeah. But uh, I, I got to say, folks, so this was something a little different than what we normally do. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed it. I found it to be quite entertaining. Uh, so, Jason, thank you for the uh, the idea there, bud, uh, with yeah. the $500 limit. The cool part, uh, the cool part about this is that a lot of people see all the the stuff on Instagram that's like super, you know, Gucci and bougie and all mm-hmm. stuff, and they think that you know, I don't, I mean, like, I, I don't necessarily know what they're thinking, but I know I thought that, man, if you want to make cool stuff, if you want to get started, it's going to be expensive, but it's really not going to be that bad if you if you have a budget like this and you work your way to where you want to be. Everybody can do it, man. Absolutely. And, and real quick, just just final thoughts, folks. Now, I was going to get around to this and tie this in the episode. We got like five minutes left, so I'm going to go ahead and read an email from uh, an anonymous listener. And it happens to be something we talked about before, real quick, just to tie this into the new maker. So check it out, new makers. You're trying to figure out ideas. Where do you typically go to find ideas? Pornhub. Well, that too. But... <laughs> oh. Wait. I'm going to baby make That's how you spice up the mind. shop. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we go to like what? We go to Etsy. People send us pictures of Etsy stuff. We Google stuff. We look on Facebook, all these things, right? We've talked about this multiple times. And it's funny because most some people would argue that we talked about this because of an incident we have. But the fact that this maker is just someone who decided to have a little rant. I want to read this rant. It's good. I think it's good. So says, okay, why do we feel like we can't copy another person's project? Let's talk. Let's take cutting boards. First, cutting board was a flat board. We washed it, and the board would be flat. Next, someone said, I can do that better by gluing several pieces together, and we'll help keeping it flat. Then someone said, hell, if we do end grain, it won't chip pieces out of the wood as easy. Next, people started making them look pretty by adding different types of wood. Next came patterns and juice groove, and then feet. Maybe add handles and round and roundovers. With all these changes, it's still a cutting board. But no one, and you can bleep this out, but no one bitches that you made a cutting board. Well, for the most part. With each change, someone was putting their own twist on the same thing. In the long run, they were making it better or unique in their own way. So why is it that if you do that with other things, we think we're stealing from another maker now? A box is a box. We put things in it. If I build a box that's 12 by 12 by 12, it will hold one cubic foot of things. Do I need to ask permission from the person that first made a box that was 12 by 12 by 12? Uh, to make the same box, or I want to make a bigger box? The answer is no. 
We copy, uh, we copy, we put our own twist on something and we create something new. And the next person will copy it and put a new twist on it and it becomes something new. If we never would have, th- uh, if we have never had things like shadow boxes, cigar boxes, if people never put a twist in the thing that were already there. We didn't go from a Model A to a Tesla overnight. There was a hundred years of changes that made that happen. Thousands of people put twists of thousands of parts to make that evolution. So why is it in the maker world, if I see something unique that I want to put my own twist on, I'm looking for, or I'm looked at as unoriginal or a copy. Isn't that a more or less how we went from a plain box to things we do now? Ford wasn't the first car ever made. It was the first to roll off a mass assembly line. With that ability, it made them able to make more in less time, making them more affordable and available to the masses, almost like what we do with our model tools like lasers and CNCs. So for the new maker, when someone tries to call you unoriginal because you ripped off their idea, let's just be real. You're putting your own damn twist on it. As long as you put your own twist on it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you do that, guess what? It's Mm -hmm. your new original idea. Because you put your own twist on it. It's your version of it. But there is no originals out there. Let's just be real. So if you're new to the game, you listen to this episode, you build a shot based on some of the suggestions we've made, just keep this in mind. You're going to find inspiration from somewhere. Go buy a Tesla. I need your gas. This is true. (laughs) It might make gas cheaper. But yes. So I thought that was a pretty good little rant. And also just a good reminder that, hey, we're not ripping off each other. We're making our own things. Just make sure you do your own to make your own put your own twist on it. Yeah, don't feel don't feel afraid to make something someone else has just because, you know, you might be called unoriginal. You're not called. You're not unoriginal for making something cornhole boards. Nick, I'm sure you've seen so many different cornhole boards and you've probably modeled a set after like six different designs. It's just what we do. So, I, I innovated mine. I I put uh, surface lights in it with LED yeah. as well as uh, Bluetooth speakers inside of each board. Yeah. So like that was Nick's twist on it, which by the way is pretty excessive, but awesome at the same time. Yeah. It was expensive as to build, but, <laughs> <laughs> I bet. but anyways, that was a small rant I got from a listener and I thought it was quite interesting uh, considering, you know, we hear a lot of, we hear that from a lot of folks in the community that seem to think they're the only ones with original ideas. Is it that time? It is that time. All right, folks, if you like this episode and you want to hear more episodes of us doing stuff off the cuff like this, where we come up with zany ideas of building, uh, building shops and, and uh, bang for your buck, uh, you know, budgets with all that stuff, uh, let us know. This way uh, we can hook you up. But uh, you can also head on over to PWNCNC because Daniel over there uh, has some amazing stuff that probably won't break your budget. Um, check them out. He's got the spindle kits and the dust boots and all that stuff for your aftermarket CNCs. So use promo code Sawdust Nation 981 if you are going to make a purchase and save 10%. Do yourself a favor. Also, we'd like to thank Total Boat for their continued support. If you want a promo code for Total Boat, go ahead and give us a uh, DM in our Instagram and we'll hook you up. And second, and but last but not least, uh, our affiliates, OMTech and Makerstock.com. Uh, check them out, and uh, yeah. Matt, what about you? Yeah, so check it out, folks. If you're listening to it on Spotify, uh, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, that seems to be pretty popular in Apple Podcasts. Go ahead and give us five stars, and uh, let us uh, know how we did. And if you don't give us five stars, let us know uh, why not, so we can go ahead and give you the content that you deserve. Um, we only get better with feedback uh, from the listeners. Uh, for example, this is a great example of that and that is us talking about the $500 shop which I think will be the name of this episode probably $500 shop I actually like that um but listener came or Jason came in with the idea and here we are talking through it so give us ideas because if it's a pretty solid one we're probably going to use it um because that's you know what he wanted to hear about was how we would build that shop so that's what we gave him um but yeah so go ahead and let us know what you thought and if you want to get a hold of us Josh how do they do that Oh, well, it's easy, folks. If you hit Instagram, go ahead and slide in our DMs. That's our destination podcast. One of us will get a hold of you, and uh, we can talk shop, topic ideas, or, you know, just 
see what you're working on. If you want to reach us individually, you can go ahead and get a hold of Nick from MPG Creations, <clears throat> Nap from Naps Nutty Works LLC, and myself, Josh from North Country Woodworking. And if you don't like Instagram or don't like social media, we have email. You can go ahead and send us an email at saltestationpodcast at gmail.com and uh, do the same thing. Slide in there, start talking shop, topic ideas for the podcast, what you're working on, or any kind of questions you may have. And the ultimate way to be part of the podcast is be a Patreon. We got a whole bunch of them in the chat. You can hear us laughing and giggling once in a while in the episode. It's probably because we're reading one of those comments and getting ideas for the podcast through topics and questions. And it's the best way to be a part of it. Um, so thank you to them. And with that, let's go with final words starting off with Nap. Hey, folks. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Just keep taking care of each other. Keep reaching out. Uh, keep asking for the information, asking questions from us. Uh, we're more than happy to help. And, uh, you know, that's just us. That's how we do things with this podcast, you know, giving back to the community all the time, whether it be just answering the simple question or let you know all the process because, you know, we don't hide those things. Uh, but, yeah, keep taking care of each other, folks. Nick. All right, like always, take care of yourselves and each other. And remember, folks, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, neither were our shops. And so, like we said this episode, you know, you don't even need $500 to start off. You can just start piecing it together one piece at a time. Um, and if you're really strapped for cash, the only thing you really have to buy is a crowbar so you can get into Naps or Josh's garage. Other than that, uh, Josh. Yeah, with that, I have camera, so go ahead. Insurance is great. <laughs> <laughs> right on, go right on ahead. <laughs> Bring it on. No, thank you for joining us for the 133rd episode of Sawdust Nation Podcast. We sure love doing this, and we hope for many more. So go ahead and tune us in when you're going to work in the morning, when you're making breakfast, when you're making dinner in the shop, when you're working out. We don't care how you listen. We just want to whisper in your ear and talk shop. With that, go make some sawdust, and Sawdust Nation out. Out, yeah, sawdust. We're out like a fat kid in dodgeball. We're out <laughs> like a we're out like a boner in sweatpants. Wait, yours comes out. Oh, oh, the flashback. <laughs> <laughs>